9. Julia Fadum 26-year-old EMT Julia Fadum was working at a night shift in New York City in July of 2023. She responded to a call on Manhattan's Upper West Side about a man having heart problems. She and her partner were transporting 48-year-old Rudolph Rudy Garcia to Mount Sinai Hospital when the patient became agitated just a few blocks away from their destination. Garcia pulled a knife from his sock as Fatum attempted to escape out the back doors of the ambulance. But the lock was jammed, preventing her from reaching safety before Garcia began stabbing her. He stabbed the young woman eight times in her arm, leg, hand, and chest, leaving her with serious wounds and a punctured lung. Fatum was finally able to escape when Garcia dropped the knife, giving her an opportunity to engage the door's emergency latch. She later told the New York Post that she thought she was going to die. As staff members and emergency responders rushed over from the nearby hospital, some tended to Fatum while others detained Garcia inside the ambulance until police arrived. He remains held without bail at Rikers Island on charges of second-degree attempted murder and assault with a weapon, which he pleaded not guilty to. Fatum underwent multiple surgeries and may suffer from permanent nerve damage. She also suffers from psychological trauma as a result of the attack. Nearly a year after the incident, she still hasn't returned to work. It's unclear if or when she'll go back to her job, but for now, she's found a new purpose in the fight against the abuse that emergency responders suffer from at the hands of unruly patients. 8. Nicholas Connery In July of 2023, a 90-year-old woman in Rancho Bernardo, California, spotted a man in a paramedic uniform trying to remove a screen from her kitchen window from outside. The suspect then tried entering the home through a sliding door and was confronted by the woman, who told him to leave. He claimed he was there to get more information about her husband, who had been taken to the hospital by EMTs the night before. But she was suspicious of his reasons for returning to the home. Later that day, after the woman left to visit her husband at the hospital, neighbors heard commotion at the house and saw the same man outside. When questioned about what he was doing, he said he was trying to get in the house because he thought he left his iPad there. His suspicious behavior prompted the homeowner to get the authorities involved, and the man was identified as 43-year-old Nicholas Connery. He was one of the emergency responders who answered the call about the victim's husband the previous night, and investigators believed he returned with the intention of burglarizing the residence. Connery was arrested a few days into the investigation. While searching him, police found Suboxone, which is used to treat opioid addiction. During a search of Connery's bedroom at a San Diego fire station, they found a piece of paper with the victim's address written on it. His colleagues told investigators that he had struggled with drug addiction in the past, and that he showed up at work intoxicated a few months prior to the suspected attempted burglary. During additional searches of Connery's vehicle and properties, law enforcement found a plethora of controlled substances, including bottles of medication with other people's names on them, as well as guns, ammunition, and equipment that's typically used for making unregistered ghost guns. Connery was charged with multiple crimes in connection with at least 10 victims, including drug possession, possession of assault weapons, burglary, and identity theft and was held without bail pending the outcome of his case. His defense lawyer told NBC San Diego that the district attorney was on an expedition to ruin Connery's reputation and that he looked forward to his client getting exonerated. In early 2024, Connery pleaded guilty to burglary, the assault weapon charge, and possessing people's personal information. He was sentenced to four years in prison. Seven, patient abuses paramedic. In 2023, shocking footage surfaced of an aggressive patient shoving a 30-year-old paramedic out of an ambulance in London. According to news reports, the patient was verbally abusive toward the healthcare worker because they had long hair. Before pushing the paramedic to the ground, he urinated inside the vehicle. Video of the incident shows the paramedic writhing in pain on the ground while the patient calmly walked away. 
Luckily, nobody was seriously injured, but the paramedic told reporters that they thought they had broken their arm at first. The encounter left them shaken and prompted them to always wear a body camera moving forward. As an additional safety precaution, the paramedic makes sure to never be alone with patients who seem like they might be at risk of acting out. Later that year, the patient was convicted of criminal charges and ordered to compensate the emergency responder. 6. Nick Fisher As a member of a crisis response team for the Colorado Springs Fire Department, Paramedic Nick Fisher had a duty to help people in crisis. But in November of 2022, he was accused of killing 63-year-old Kevin Dismang, who was in the throes of a mental health crisis when the team went to the scene. Emergency responders arrived to find Dismang wandering in the street. Officer Sean Reed instructed him to put his hands up and reassured him that he wasn't under arrest but he failed to cooperate. A struggle ensued, resulting in the restraining technique that Dismong's loved ones believed killed him. According to a wrongful death lawsuit filed by Dismong's family in early 2024, Fisher choked the troubled patient for nearly two minutes at the direction of other team members. Dismong lost consciousness and was taken to the emergency room, where staff members performed chest compressions in an attempt to revive him. Meanwhile, Fisher allegedly stood outside Dismong's room and bragged about taking him down. Dismong was pronounced dead at the hospital. Fisher no longer works for the Colorado Springs Police Department, while Reed remains employed as a police officer and was never disciplined. No criminal charges have been filed in connection with the tragedy. 5. Peter Cadigan and Peggy Finley 35-year-old Earl Moore Jr. was suffering from severe alcohol withdrawal when police responded to a gun-related call at his home in Springfield, Illinois in December of 2022. A relative told responding officers that there was no gun and that Moore wasn't being violent, but that he was hallucinating after going four days without drinking. Body cam footage showed Moore lying in bed in a severely distressed and confused state seemingly unaware of where he was and unable to answer basic questions, like what year it was. He experienced fleeting moments of clarity, but was clearly in severe discomfort and, for the most part, incoherent. EMT Peggy Finley arrived to find Earl on the floor, where he was writhing in agony. In police body cam footage, she could be seen standing over Moore and repeatedly barking at him to sit up. Finley told Moore to quit acting stupid and refused to help him to the ambulance, telling him that he could either get up and go to a hospital or be left behind at the house. Earl fell several times as police officers helped him to the ambulance, where he was strapped face down on a stretcher. He became unresponsive during the ride to the emergency room and was declared dead at the hospital after attempts to resuscitate him failed. The coroner ruled that Moore died from compression and positional asphyxia, which resulted from him being improperly placed on the stretcher. Finley and her fellow EMT, Peter Cadigan, are each facing a first-degree murder charge. Prosecutors have accused the defendants of failing to take Moore's vitals during the ambulance ride, which arguably might have alerted them that something was wrong in time to save his life. In addition to criminal charges, the EMTs are facing a wrongful death lawsuit brought by Earl's family. 4. Jacob Steele After arriving late for his shift in northern Alabama one evening in April of 2019, EMT Jacob Steele was suspected of being impaired. He underwent an evaluation and was cleared to work, but soon began falling asleep behind the wheel of the ambulance that he was driving. Steele's co-worker Calvin Hui offered to take over driving, even though Hui's skills were needed in the back of the ambulance for advanced life support transport, which Steele was not qualified to oversee. At the time, the EMTs were transporting 81-year-old military veteran Robert Owen from Huntsville to a hospital in Birmingham for surgery. Instead of closely monitoring Owen's condition for any signs of emergency during the 100-mile drive, Steele put in earbuds and fell asleep. In the meantime, Owen began to experience agonizing chest and upper body pain. He was having a heart attack and was yelling for help, but Steele continued to snooze away. 
Hui eventually overheard Owen's desperate pleas and pulled over. He administered medication and continued driving. Owen was still conscious when they arrived at the hospital, where he told his family what had happened. His condition deteriorated rapidly, and he died in the intensive care unit 11 days later. A medical examiner ruled that Owen died from pre-existing cardiac conditions and the heart attack, but his family argued in a wrongful death lawsuit that a lack of proper medical care contributed to the tragedy. The lawsuit accused Steele of being high on the job and pointed out that Steele had previously been fired for driving erratically on the job, but had somehow gotten rehired. In May of 2024, a jury awarded a $15 million settlement to Owen's widow, Gloria. It's unclear whether the ambulance company plans to appeal the case. Three. Bryce Reed. In April of 2013, an ammonium nitrate explosion at a fertilizer plant devastated the town of West Texas, killing 15 people and damaging dozens of homes, two schools, and other buildings. Blast was so massive that it was recorded by seismographs as a small earthquake. Most of those who died were firefighters and paramedics. One emergency responder, EMT Bryce Reed, survived and became the de facto spokesperson in news interviews about the tragedy. He also spoke at a memorial to the victims who lost their lives. A few days after the explosion, Reed's superiors at his job learned that he had made misleading statements about where he was when the blast occurred and how close he was to it. He was fired from his job, his wife soon left him and took their child with her, and things only worsened from there. Over the following weeks, investigators discovered that Reed had given materials for making a pipe bomb to a local resident to keep at their home. The items included metal piping, a fuse, metal coiling, and chemical powders. Reed has never been blamed or charged for the deadly explosion at the fertilizer plant, but the discovery raised suspicions that he was involved. Needless to say, any hope Reed may have had of making a comeback in his line of work were soon vanquished, and he was arrested on federal charges related to the bomb-making materials. In October 2013, he pleaded guilty to conspiracy to possess a destructive device and attempted obstruction of justice. He was sentenced to 21 months in prison and tearfully apologized for his actions which were chalked up to a fascination with explosives. To this day, Reed maintains that he never had bad intentions and that he was not involved in the fertilizer plant disaster. 2. Devin Farina In early 2024, 39-year-old firefighter and paramedic Devin Farina was accused of stealing from the homes of recently hospitalized residents in Bethlehem, New York. One woman had noticed $1,600 worth of jewelry missing from her home, while a man discovered footage of the thief after installing cameras at the home of an aunt in anticipation of her need for around-the-clock care upon her return home from the hospital. In the video, the suspect could be seen climbing into the house through a window at 1.30 in the morning. The footage led to the identification of Farina as the prime suspect, and he was charged with multiple crimes, including burglary, attempted burglary, grand larceny, and criminal mischief. During a court hearing shortly after his arrest, a detective testified that Farina changed his story multiple times during an interview after initially admitting to going into the home where he was captured on camera. Another detective described finding a lockpicking device, gloves, tools, and a headlamp during a search of Farina's vehicle. Several months later, in June of 2024, Farina was charged with additional burglary and grand larceny counts for allegedly stealing from a home in the town of Troy. The victim, a 28-year-old woman, returned home after being taken to the hospital to find several items missing, including a cell phone, tools, video game systems, and more. Farina's criminal cases are ongoing. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. 1. Kenneth Hollenbeck In February of 2015, disturbing footage of a paramedic flipping a patient off a stretcher at a hospital in Brevard County, Florida went viral. 
The patient, 48-year-old James Slater, was being transported to Weisthoff Hospital in Rockledge when he was asked to get off the backboard. He allegedly refused, and 35-year-old Kenneth Hollenbach dumped him onto the floor. Slater told authorities that he was in too much pain to move from the stretcher to a wheelchair on his own. He also said that Hollenbeck seemed angry the moment he walked into Slater's house in response to the man's call for help. Hollenbeck was fired from his job and charged with felony elderly disabled abuse. A few months later, he pleaded down to a misdemeanor culpable negligence charge. In a statement to Florida Today, Assistant State Attorney Gary Beatty explained that pursuing a felony case would have prolonged the resolution of the case past the victim's life expectancy and subjected Slater to stress that could have aggravated his condition. Hollenbeck was sentenced to a year of probation and ordered to surrender his paramedic license. In a statement to the court, Slater said he disagreed with the sentence and that he did not believe the state attorney's office acted in his best interests. Number 10. The Wrong Leg An elderly man was at hospital in Austria when doctors told him that he needed to have surgery to remove one of his legs. This man was 82 years old at the time of his operation, which was necessary to prevent an infection that could have killed him. According to CNN Health, the patient was suffering from several different medical conditions on both his legs. At 82, he still had a lot of life left and was willing to lose the leg to live for another decade, so he agreed to rush and have the procedure. Here's where the doctors made the worst mistake of the elderly man's life. Human error caused the doctors to amputate his right leg above the knee. That wouldn't be a problem, except for the fact that they needed to remove his left leg. They switched legs and accidentally cut off the wrong one. According to a statement from the Friedstadt Clinic, it was all because one of the hospital workers accidentally put a pre-op mark on the wrong leg. The doctors didn't bother to double check and amputated the wrong limb. That's not where the story ends either. Still, he needed to have his left leg removed or the infection he was suffering from would kill him. The doctors had to quickly perform surgery to remove the correct leg. When all was said and done, he was left with no legs and incredible psychological damage. The surgeon who was on duty that day is not working as of right now apparently taking leave at their own request. It's likely they're embarrassed, or at least a little ashamed. Number 9. Wife Killer In Massachusetts, a well-respected surgeon has gotten into some serious trouble. Police in Dover arrested Ingolf Turek and charged him with the murder of Kathleen McLean. Kathleen was the mother of three who vanished the week before her husband's arrest. She went missing on Thursday, and her corpse was discovered by police on Saturday. Kathleen and her husband had been together for two years when they got married last December. Ingolf already had two teenage sons and was a famous doctor, specializing in robotic and laparoscopic surgery, having to do with urinary obstructions. Basically, he specialized in urology. But the surgeon had already been getting into some trouble before he killed his wife and dumped her body. In February, he was terminated from the St. Elizabeth's Medical Center for billing the Medicaid program for surgeries that he never performed. He was a total fraud. He also allegedly beat up his wife when he got home from a hard day at work. Kathleen had complained to the police about the abusive behavior, saying she was trying to get a divorce. She said that after her husband lost his job, she was scared for her life every single day. Eventually, Kathleen did get a restraining order against her husband and was able to file for divorce. But that didn't stop him from attacking her, cutting her with scissors, and occasionally strangling her. By May, Kathleen lifted the restraining order and got back together with her husband. Shortly after that, he killed her, threw a limp body in a pond, and pretended like nothing happened. Number 8. Dropped on the Floor Jeanette Shields was taken to the hospital for gallstones. At 70 years old, she was having a bit of a tough time going to the bathroom by herself. When she was at the hospital, she buzzed the medical team to help her take her to the toilet, but nobody responded. When she tried to go by herself, she fell down and broke her hip. But that's not even the bad part of the story. The hospital went ahead and repaired Jeanette's hip, with the surgery going off without any hiccups. After the procedure, the doctors dropped her from the operating table. They literally killed her. When the doctors dropped her, she cracked the back of her head on the floor and sustained serious head trauma. From that point, her condition deteriorated until she passed away just a short time later. 
This unfortunate incident happened in the United Kingdom. According to the woman's husband, the hospital only agreed to do a post-mortem examination to see the exact cause of death after he demanded it. And now, the hospital is wrapped up in an ongoing evaluation and nobody has been blamed yet for her tragic death. Number 7. The Worst Doctor Ricardo Cruciani was the worst doctor. Not only that, he was a complete scumbag. The things he did as a doctor are hard to believe and sickening to hear. Ricardo worked at the Israel Medical Center in New York and had a reputation as being a great pain physician. He was described as warm and charming, the kind of person you would never expect to abuse somebody. And yet, he was running a scam in which he got women addicted to pain medications to the point where they were dependent on his prescriptions. Then, he would become sexually aggressive in front of his patients and refused to give them the drugs that he had got them addicted to unless they did things for him. And if the women refused, he would refuse in turn to refill the prescriptions. He would go so far as to force them into opioid withdrawal until they came crawling back to him offering sexual favors. Amazingly, Ricardo got away with this for decades. Whenever the complaints about him started to pile up, he would simply move to a new job at a new hospital in a new state. It wasn't until 2017 when he finally got charged in Pennsylvania for sexual assault. It was then that his medical license was taken away, but he's yet to be locked up behind bars. He's still facing criminal charges in both New Jersey and New York, but he's roaming free because he was able to pay the $1 million bail. Do you think Ricardo should be allowed free because he was able to pay such an exorbitant bail? Or should he be locked up for life? No exceptions. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. The Doctor and the Angels A doctor from Connecticut tangled himself up in an illegal opioid scheme. When he got busted, he then managed to tangle himself up in a murder-for-hire scheme by trying to hire a hitman with the Hell's Angels to take out a witness that wanted to testify against him. Anatoly Brailovsky got arrested in June of 2020 for illegally distributing prescriptions. To put that in simple terms, he was using his status as a doctor to distribute opioids to his patients for cash. He would trade cash for a prescription for drugs. Unknown to him, as he was participating in this drug dealing operation, the DEA was getting complaints about his prescription habits. The main complaint came from the eyewitnesses in the case, somebody that the doctor knew but who hasn't been named for safety reasons. Anatoly posted bail of $750,000 and was ordered to stay at home. But in a desperate attempt to have the case thrown out, he called up a friend who he thought would know somebody in the Hell's Angels. He asked this individual to get one of their biker gang buddies to either intimidate or kill the witness. Naturally, the friend went to the police instead of the Hell's Angels and together they set up a sting operation. Anatoly was caught red-handed trying to hire an assassin that happened to be an undercover agent. He's now facing charges for trying to kill somebody and for being a drug-peddling doctor. Number 5. Fatal Dosage In a short time span of just three years between 2015 and 2018, an Ohio doctor murdered 25 of his patients by giving them fatal doses of pain medication. His name is William Hussle and he had been working as a critical care physician at Mount Carmel Health in Columbus. He killed people by injecting them with upwards of 500 micrograms of fentanyl, way over what is considered to be a lethal dose. Each kind of murder carries the possible sentence of 15 years to life. With 25 of them piled up, we can only hope he's never getting out of jail. But why did he kill so many people when he was a successful doctor? We don't actually know what his motivation was. William's lawyer made a statement saying that he never intended to kill anyone and was not performing mercy killings. Nonetheless, he did kill 25 people, and that is not an accident. He is currently trying to wriggle his way out of the charges by any means necessary, so he'll probably never actually admit why he was injecting innocent people with lethal dosages. Number 4. Too Many Patients An Italian doctor has been accused of murdering patients with COVID-19 by injecting them with lethal doses of anesthetic during the coronavirus outbreak in March of 2020. At the time, Carlo Mosca was the head of the accident and emergency at the Monte Carri Hospital in Lombardy. Prosecutors say they administered two types of anesthetics to coronavirus patients when it wasn't necessary. Two of his victims include Natal Bassi and Angelo Pelletti, both of whom died under his care. 
a complaint was made against Carlo Mosca in April through a WhatsApp text message, accusing him of purposefully administering these anesthetics so that he could free up beds in the hospital for other patients. In the insanity that happened back in March, it's understandable to see why a person would do this. The hospital went from taking care of patients with individual problems to an endless string of people sick from the virus. It became a burden to everyone, but Carlo Mosca just couldn't handle it. He's also been accused of faking health records to make patients seem as though they were terminally ill so that he wasn't under suspicion. As of right now, he's been placed under house arrest while investigators try to put together a case against him. He says that the allegations are baseless, but those who work closely with him believe he's a cold-blooded killer. Number 3. Black Magic Doctor In India, the police arrested a doctor who murdered his wife by injecting her with a high dose of drugs. The arrest was only made nine months after she had already died. According to the cops involved in the arrest, the murder was far more than just an angry doctor killing his wife. It was actually part of a black magic ritual. The killer is Dr. Chana Keshapa, and he was practicing medicine in the small Rameshwara village. After his wife died, he told the police that she had been suffering from low blood pressure and that he gave her an injection of drugs to try to help. Unfortunately, he said the drugs made her sick and she died en route to the hospital. After that, his dead wife's parents lodged a complaint saying that their daughter had actually been murdered. When the police went to investigate, they found that the doctor had connections to black magic practitioners in the area and had been busted performing bizarre ceremonies before. In an absolutely horrific revelation, police discovered that he used his wife as a human sacrifice, which he had been hoping would result in getting some treasure. In other words, he killed his wife to appease dark spirits with the hope that they would reward him with riches. It really makes you wonder how this guy even made it through medical school. Number 2. Under Anesthesia Frederick Field was a doctor in Oregon, but he wasn't a very good one. He was accused of abusing his patients while they were under anesthesia. The accusations turned out to be true, and he was sentenced to spend 23 years in prison. Anyone who's ever had to be put under the doctor's office or the dentist's office has probably wondered once or twice what the dog is doing while he's sleeping in the chair. If you were one of the patients of Frederick Field, the answer is that he was doing stuff to you while you were passed out. And while Frederick did this to quite a few people, the straw that broke the camel's back was a 66-year-old woman in 2011. This woman, who hasn't been identified for privacy reasons, underwent surgery at the Mid-Columbia Medical Center. Frederick was her doctor. The very instant that she woke up and was able to talk, she informed the other doctors that Frederick had done things to her while he thought she was out cold. He had gotten sloppy and a little too brave, and the woman knew exactly what he did. What's really terrifying is only when the elderly lady finally made a huge fuss was when the hospital took this conduct seriously. Frederick had originally got his license to practice in the state of Oregon in 2005, after getting his medical degree from the Tulane University School of Medicine in 1998. When his time in court came around, one of the earliest accusations was from 2007. This means he didn't wait very long before he started his reign of terror. In the end, 12 patients came forward and Frederick pleaded guilty to every single one of them. Number 1. Road Trip Killer A doctor from Oklahoma, a seemingly ordinary man, was arrested by the Arkansas State Police for committing murder on a road trip. Tyler Tate was taking a vacation with one of his colleagues, Moria Kinsey. She was an emergency room nurse at the same hospital where Tyler worked. A few miles north of Lake Village in Arkansas, Moria Kinsey's body was found on the side of Highway 65. She was rushed to the hospital and pronounced dead the following day. An investigation revealed that she and the doctor had just traveled to Mississippi together and that they had gotten into some sort of altercation. The investigation also revealed that Tyler Tate has a history of domestic violence. A woman named Shelley Burris had requested a restraining order against him just earlier that year. But of course, Tyler violated that order, later being charged with domestic abuse, assault, and violence. Nobody knows what happened out there yet, especially since the doctor has lawyered up. But judging by his long string of domestic charges going back nearly a decade, he got mad and Moria got dead. As of right now, we're still waiting on the results on the autopsy to give us a cause of death. Thanks for watching. Would you rather wait for over an hour while you're bleeding for paramedics to arrive at the scene of an accident 
or have them accidentally drop you out of a stretcher after you broke your leg? Tell us which would be worse in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. Bye.